Hi there, welcome back to Chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're taking a look at some of those fundamental gas laws that we learned about in the last video and expanding our knowledge of that. Now, one of the things that a lot of students find very difficult about these types of gas law problems is knowing which gas law equation to use. So we're going to do an example of this and try to decide which gas law to use. So in this problem here, it says a sealed zippered plastic bag has 1.00 liter of air sealed inside at a room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. When the bag is placed into a freezer at a temperature of negative 18 degrees Celsius, what will its volume be? So as we think about this problem here, what we have to ask ourselves is which factors are changing? Is it pressure? Is it volume? Is it temperature? Which of those things are changing? Well, we can see, first of all, that temperature is changing. It goes from 21 degrees Celsius to negative 18 degrees Celsius. So that means that T is a factor here. We also can see that volume is changing because the bag goes from a volume of 1.00 liter to some other new volume that we're being asked to calculate. So V is also a factor. So T and V, well, that sounds like Charles' law. So what you have to do is try to ask yourself which factors are changing. So since it's Charles' law, we can just plug and chug. So V1 is the starting volume and that's 1.00 liters so we plug that in for v1 now the t1 is 21 degrees celsius but as always we have to change that to kelvins don't we so we have to take 21 and add that to 273 so our t1 our starting temperature is 294 kelvins now on the other side of the equal sign v2 is our final volume and that's what we're solving for the question says what will its volume be so v2 is our unknown and then T2 is our final temperature. That's negative 18 degrees Celsius. Of course, we have to convert that to Kelvin. So we add 273 to negative 18, and we find that our T2 is 255 Kelvins. Now, just like we had in those other uh, equations like this, probably the best uh, strategy here is to cross multiply and solve for v2 so when i cross multiply in this direction i get 294 times v2 so there we have uh, that value and then when i cross multiply in this direction 255 times 1 is well just 255 so to solve for v2 i take both sides and divide by 294 so 255 divided by 294 is about 0 0.87 liters and so that is our answer for the final volume here. And that answer makes sense because Charles' Law basically tells us that when an enclosed gas is cooled, its volume is going to shrink down. And that makes sense. It was cooled from 21 degrees down to a much colder temperature, so it's going to shrink from one liter down to you know, something smaller than that, about 0.87 liters is a reasonable answer. Now, we're gonna take those three gas laws that we learned in the last video, Boyle's Law, Charles' Law and Gay-Lussac's Law, and we're going to put them all together into one big gas law that we call the combined gas law. And that's basically just all three of those gas laws that we learned earlier put together. It's P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. And of course, temperature has to be in kelvins. Now, let's try an example with the combined gas law. Here's a problem. It says a container with an initial volume of 1.0 liter is occupied by a gas at a pressure of 1.5 atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius. By changing the volume, the pressure of the gas increases to 6.0 atmospheres as the temperature is raised to 100 degrees Celsius. What is the new volume? So we can see that pressure, volume, and temperature are all changing in this equation. We go from one liter of volume to some new volume. We go from 1.5 atmospheres to six atmospheres. We, our temperature changes from 25 degrees to 100 degrees. So all three of those are changing. So that's why we have to use the combined gas law. We're just gonna plug and chug right into that equation. P1 is our starting pressure, and that is 1.5 atmospheres, right out of the problem. Now V1 is our starting volume, and that is 1.0 liters. So I plug that in for V1. In the denominator, we're going to have T1, our starting temperature. That's 25 degrees Celsius 
of course I have to convert that to Kelvin. So when I add 273, that gives me a T1 of about 298 kelvins. Now on the other side of the equal sign, my P2, the final pressure is 6.0 atmospheres. So I put that in for P2. My V2, the final volume is what I'm solving for. The question says, what is the new volume? So we're solving for V2. And of course, the final temperature, the T2, is 100 degrees Celsius. Convert that to kelvins, and that's 373 kelvins. So now we just have an algebra equation that we have to solve for. So once again, cross multiplication seems to be a pretty good method here to solve for this. So when I cross multiply in this direction, 298 times 6.0 times V2, that's about 1,788 times V2. And that's equal to, when I cross multiply in this direction, 1.5 times 1.0 times 373, which is about 559.5. So I divide both sides by 1,788, and I find that V2, the final volume, is about 0.31 liters. So that's how you'd solve a problem with the combined gas law. I hope you enjoyed this video. hope you learned something from it. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it, and that really does help the algorithm and helps get my videos out to lots of chemistry students who want to learn chemistry just like you. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video where we can learn some more chemistry together.